There are a lot of really great gestures and shortcuts on the iPhone and iPad, and you probably know some of them. You know, like swiping down to bring up the search menu, or, or swiping up to bring up Control Center, where you have all of these little shortcuts, but some of them aren't quite so obvious, so we're going to run through some of our favorites that you should know. First one is one that a lot of people know, so we'll start off simple. In a lot of apps, you can just pull the menu down to refresh whatever it is. So in Mail, if you just pull down, you gotta pull down pretty far, you'll refresh and it'll check for messages again for you. This works in a ton of different apps. If you swipe to the left, you'll get the option to archive or perform a number of other actions on that particular message, which is also pretty handy. You can also perform this swipe gesture in the Messages app, and it'll show you the timestamp for when each message was sent. If you swipe from the very edge of the screen, you can kind of peek at the previous screen, like your inbox and messages, or in mail, also your inbox. You can just take a peek or you can swipe all the way to go to your inbox. In Safari, this performs a slightly different action. It'll go back one page. And what's really nice is if you swipe from the right edge, you can go forward a page. Let's move on to a few iPad specific gestures or four and five fingers, which is really cool. So let's say you're in an app and you wanna go back to the home screen. Just pinch in with four or five fingers and you'll go straight there without having to tap the home button. Similarly, you can swipe up with four or five fingers to go to the multitasking drawer or even cooler, you can swipe to the side with four or five fingers to swipe through the other apps that are currently open. The iPad also has this cool split keyboard feature, so this full keyboard is sometimes kind of hard to type on, but if you pinch outward with two fingers along the keyboard, you can pinch it into this split keyboard so you can type on the side of the iPad with your thumbs. You can also access this by pressing and holding the keyboard button or pressing it and sliding it upwards so you can type even higher on the screen and move it around, which is cool. Speaking of the keyboard, sometimes typing capital letters and numbers is kind of a pain. Luckily, there's a shortcut that's actually simpler than this. You can just press and hold on the number key, drag it to the number you want to type, and let go. It'll take you back to the keyboard automatically. You can do the same thing with shift, and once you get used to it, you will probably type a little bit faster. The keyboard also has a few other little hidden gems. If you're in Safari, for example, and you press and hold on the period key, it will bring up the option to type .com, .net, .org, things like that. And in any app, if you press and hold on a key, it'll give you a number of special characters related to that key, like accents and things like that. Let's take a quick look at the calendar app. Moving things around, moving events is really kind of a pain to type in different event times, but if you press and hold on an event, you can actually drag it to make it shorter or longer, or move it around entirely. It's really fluid, really smooth, and not everyone knows that that's there. It's really nice. Back in Mail, if you want to see a list of your drafts, all you need to do is press and hold on that Compose button in the corner, and you'll see a list, which is really, really great. Nice little shortcut. Similarly, if you're in Safari and you want to see your history, just press and hold on the back button and you'll see a list of all the pages that brought you to your current tab. Lastly, and this is my favorite shortcut on iOS, hands down, if you've scrolled down really far on a page and you want to scroll back up, all you need to do is tap the menu bar. So no matter how far down you are, you can back to the top of the page almost instantly. A few of these are iOS 7 specific, but a lot of them should work on older versions of iOS 2, so hopefully now you'll be a little bit faster when you're navigating around your iPhone and iPad.